Hey everybody, guess what time it is? It's Mailbag Monday time! And I've just noticed that this is in fact the 50th mailbag that I've done. Wow, amazing how time flies. Anyway, to start with the traditional opening, we have beer. Uh, from Stone Angel Brewing in Winnipeg, Red Handed Irish Red Ale. 4.5% alcohol, one, uh, 22 IBU, so not too bitter. Ingredients, barley water and hops. I already kind of did the opening a little bit. Uh, Stone Angel Brewing began production in 2017, specializing in easy drinking Euro style beers. Nice. Uh, I'm not going to read all that. You can go to their webpage and read it if you want. Look, there's a web address there. Hmm. I don't like the color of that. Not too bad. Interesting flavor. Not uh, not super malty like the Stouts and Porters, but uh, not uh, crazy lightweight either. I like it. All right, let's start with this guy. One plastic sheet and five modules. I wonder what plastic sheet really is this time. Because it's never actually plastic sheet, is it? And everybody gets stuff that... Oh! It's a bunch of spools of wire. Okay. So what do we got here? These guys call themselves... 0.1 millimeter jumper wire. Are they all the same? Yes, they are. And they look like they're enameled wire. Which means... You can wind inductors and magnets and whatnot out of them. So if they're enameled, they've got an, a thin enamel insulation on them. So I should not be able to get continuity across them. And I'm not. That's great. So I wonder why there's... Oh, it looks like there's only really a couple of layers on the spool there so it's not huge amounts on each spool okay well that's that's something let's go take a look at the listing for that one and then we'll come back and take a look at this five pieces one millimeter copper soldering solder ppa enameled repair real wire currently selling for a dollar 58 or a buck 19 american i paid a dollar 66 way back when so you'll get a deal. Uh, maybe, unless the price changes again. Free shipping, of course. One roll of 0.1 millimeter enameled wire. Uh, length about 15 meters. So is that 15 meters for each roll or divided by the five rolls? Hmm. Can be used to connect fly line, jump wire. Okay, so they're suggesting using it as bodge wire, basically. Um... I suppose, or I could use it for winding inductors or coils or pickups or things like that, which is, I think, why I probably bought it. But, yeah, you could definitely use that as bodge wire. It's insulated. Okay, and the other thing that is in here is 0.6 millimeter, the finest quality solder, 64% tin, 37% lead, 1.2% something uh, 40 grams worth though just says the same thing on the other side the high pure degree does not need the live soldering in clean silk quality first reputation first so the reason that I got this other than it's always handy to have solder around is oh that's nice and fine too okay is that the last couple of kits you may have noticed that I've been using this monstrous stuff, uh, which is 1.57 millimeters, 60% lead. Oh, this is 37% lead. Okay, that could be a bit of a pain in the ass to solder with, actually. Um, anyway, I'd, I'd lost this piece, which is a little bit thicker than that, but I don't have much of it left, so I figured I'd better order some more before I completely ran out. So that's what that is. Um, I guess I should try it out. That's fairly soft. 
yeah, it's about the same as that. Let's go see what I paid for it and then I'll fire up soldering iron and uh, just see how it behaves. Soldering wire, tin lead rosin core solder, 64 tin, 37 lead, 0 0.6 milliliter, 40 gram, 1.2 unspecified units. Uh, from GC Supermarket. Actually, it's currently going for 264 or buck 99 American. I paid 277 for it back when I bought it. What do we say down here? Good wettability, conductivity, thermal conductivity, easy to climb on the tin. Hmm. Uh, climb tin with good speed and a few residues, no knot in winding. Right. 64. Ah, there, 1.2% flux. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, let's play with this solder. I've got my iron set for about 420 or so. That melts fairly easily. Well, not quite as easily as this old solder, which is probably more leaded. So I've got a couple of things on here. I've got a couple of pieces of stranded wire, and I've got an LED down here, so... First we'll do the stranded wire. The stranded wire is not tinned or anything. So we'll do that with that solder. And wipe the iron tip off nice and clean. And do it at this with this solder at the same temperature. Need to push a lot more in. Okay, well that... I mean, it's, it's a little bit higher temperature. I'm going to bump my iron up. Where is it now? It's about two-thirds of the way between 400 and 450 before, before it was one-third or so. So I'll clean the tip again. Do this side of the LED with my ancient solder. I'll clean the tip again. Do this side of the LED with the new solder. Again, it's taking a little bit longer to melt. So I'm probably going to have to run at a higher temperature than I'm used to. But, let's see what we got here. So the two on the right are the new solder and the two on the left are the old higher lead solders. I don't know. It works. It's not quite as bright and shiny. Maybe if I crank my iron up just a little bit more to 450. Focus. I'll just re -tin re wet those. Yeah, it's not quite as shiny, is it? Huh. I guess that's the higher tin and lower lead content. Oh well. It was only a couple of bucks. And. It solders, I and mean, it's not a complete waste of time. Maybe I'll uh, pick something else up and try that too. Okay, the next thing is finding. I'm told that's a jewelry term for just odd little bits and pieces that you use for making jewelry. And this isn't the first time I've seen an eBay seller call it, they call something a finding. Ooh, elastic band. What is this? It's a bunch of little circuit boards. Oh! Okay. I know what these are. These are those little capacitive touch sensor. I don't know why I even bother trying to get these gently out of the bags. I'm going to put them in a component drawer anyway. Yeah, these are these little capacitive touch sensors. Don't think that I've... Uh, I used a whole bunch of them on my railroad not that long ago. I'll, uh, I'll link that video up there. It's... Uh, I built a control panel for my model railroad, or part of my model railroad, using these guys, hidden just behind a layer of, uh, of paper for the graphic, so that uh, I control some uh, switch machines. Just looking closely at them, so that A and B jumper pad, jump one or the other, one of them's for momentary or toggle, and the other one is for normally high or normally low output, I think. and this pad up here is for putting a capacitor on to change the sensitivity of it. It's a really f small picofarad value, I think. Uh, but anyway, these work pretty well. 
ground and 5 volts and then the output either goes high or low depending on what you've got that uh, jumper set for. Lot 10 pieces TP223 capacitive touch switch button self lock module for Arduino from Good Jewelry 8. Uh, $1.97 for the 10 of them or $1.49 American and free shipping of course power it'll it'll range between two and a half and five and a half volts so it'll run either on a five volt arduino or on a 3.3 uh, volt thing like uh, raspberry pi or esp8266 or stuff like that um so here's those two jumpers that i was talking about you either have self lock or no lock which is latching or momentary and you can have either a high or a low ttl output High being essentially VCC and low being zero. You can choose between any permutation of those two things. Okay, next let's look at this big guy. This actually was shipped to me by Canada Post from uh, Mississauga, Ontario. Even though the order, I'm pretty sure, said China. And also for some reason, it says from Mississauga, but it's got a YVR code, which is Vancouver. Strange. Oh, it's a crimping tool. Oh, excellent. What do we got here? Professional crimping tool for the best technicians, the best electricians' tools. Okay. So this one is or sleeve type terminal. Oh, is that for those ferrule things? I did order one of those. That's a neat way that those jaws go in. So it does a nice square crimp. Let's zoom in on that. So it crimps from all four sides and crimps a nice square crimp. And then it's a latching crimper. You get all the way down and then it opens back up again. Cool. I know I ordered some of those ferrules, but I don't have them yet. Here's another cheap crimper that I got. And again, it's a latching one. It's, it's for the uh, DuPont style connectors or other small connectors. And again, it ratchets in so it doesn't reverse until it's crimped as tight as it claims the, is the specification. Um, but this is a completely different action. This one sort of squishes it. It doesn't pre or prevents it from going sideways. and sort of squishes it between the hammer and the anvil, whichever one is which. But that one, that four-way action is pretty cool. Oh, and it's got some serration. Can you see that? There's some serrations inside the jaws, too. That's neat. Okay, so what happens if we put some serious thickness in there? Oh, okay, it still crunches down pretty tight onto them. But I, I think there's some kind of spring action behind. Oh, yeah, look at the uh, serrations that it puts into there. That's slick. Self-adjusting ratcheting ferro crimper plier HCSC8 uh, 6-4A, whatever that means. 0.25 to 6 millimeter squared or AWG 23 up to 10 wire. I got this from Comfy Lifer, who no longer sells it. Uh, from him, I paid $16.08. Um, this random seller that I found is currently selling it for $17.44 Canadian or $13.16 American. So, uh, capacity, like it's set up above, uh, 0.25 up to 6 millimeters squared or 23 up to 10 AWG. 23 is nice and tiny. 10 is, that's like heavy house AC wiring. Good for, what, in the 30 amp range or something crazy like that. Looks like there's a couple of different versions of it. This one up here with four jaws is the one that I got. Looks like there is also a six jaw version available. So just be careful when you're ordering that you get what you want. Uh, Self-adjusting to the size of the wire and ferrule size. Easy operation. Okay, and crimping pressure has been set precisely in the factory. Well, that's good to know. What is next? One times driver. 
Hmm. Motor driver, LED driver, car and driver. Hey, what do we have on the board? We have an inductor and a capacitor. We have a bunch of diodes and we have a little chip. That's an LED driver. If the rest of the components weren't a giveaway, that right there is. It says LED output. Pretty sure we saw something almost exactly like this a week or two ago on another mailbag. So I'm not going to go too deep into these things. Five pieces, 10 watt LED drivers, 850 to 900 milliamp power supply for a 9 watt, 10 watt LED light lamp bulb. I bought it from Electronic Dash Firms and I paid $1.80 for the five of them at an auction. But Electronic Dot Firms doesn't sell it anymore. So I've had to go and take a search around. And here's a random seller, Pan Pan Supermarket. I've dealt with them before and they have it there uh, but what do we got here input voltage 9 to 24 volts waterproof not uh, output uh, 8 to 11 current 850 milliamps up to 900 it said in the listing yeah for 110 watt LED three in series and three in parallel which is how they're laid out on those little cobs and the last thing for today, LED Quantity 20 Development Board Quantity 5. Ah, that sounds like fun if I don't cut through them. Nothing else in there. Well packaged. Bubbles upon bubbles and in anti-static bags. Okay, so we do have five things here. And they're probably all the same. It is a, a relay module. So we have a 5 volt DC coil on it. We have three screws over here, which are labeled with Chinese characters. Ah, but they are also labeled with a pictorial over here. So normally closed contact, common contact, and normally open contact. Normal being the de-energized state, so with, as it sits right now, these two pins are connected. If you energize the relay coil, these two here, um, the switch flips over and these two will be connected. Nice. But the reason for the module is that you can uh, connect, well, the coil of this is going to draw way more current than an Arduino pin or any microcontroller pin can can provide so there is a wee transistor in here which sits in between so that input will go to the base of the transistor or the gate if it's a MOSFET um, and these resistors will bias it properly that diode will be across the coil of the relay uh, backwards in parallel to it but backwards so that basically when it gets power normally through its in the normal polarity. Nothing happens when the relay drops out. So the uh, transistor shuts off. The relay drops out. The f magnetic field in that coil of the relay is going to collapse, and while that's happening, it's going to induce a current backwards through the circuit. So that reverse bias diode is going to clamp that voltage down to its, uh, its forward voltage, which is going to be about 0.6 volts, unless it's a shot key, and that will protect the rest of the circuit from a massive voltage spike. Nice. And then we've got two LEDs here. I assume one is power and one is energized. Um, and VCC and ground in. Five pieces, one channel DC 5 volt relay switch module for Arduino Raspberry Pi pick arm AVR. Are your shop dash R sold it to me for... Uh, well, he's selling uh, five of these now for six dollars and thirty-two cents Canadian. I paid five eleven. Um, he's not listing any other currencies, so you'll have to do the translation for yourself. Not much to say down here that hasn't already been said. Five volts, one-channel relay interface board. A standard interface directly connects to microcontrollers. Ah, the red LED is uh, for power on, 
and the green LED is for indicator for relay the switch. So there. And I was a little bit hasty in tossing out that packaging because buried in the bubble wrap, I found this when I was cleaning up the floor. These little, what do they call them, piranha style LEDs, I think they are. Um, looks like about 20 of them. Hmm. If I remember correctly, these things are stupidly bright. Okay, I've got the power supply set for 5 volts and current limiting at about 20 milliamps. So it looks like, let's look, zoom down on this. So it looks like these two pins are common and these two pins are common. So, guess if that's, oh there we go, oh wow. That is a very bright red LED. Something white to bounce it off here. There's the color, nice bright red. So these are those little piranha or super flux. Also from R your shop dash R is four pin red piranha flux dome wide angle bright LEDs. Um, they're not selling them in 20 packs anymore, but here's their price for a thousand. So their price for ten or for a hundred would be four seventy. Price for ten would be forty seven cents. So yeah, not too bad. I paid a dollar thirty eight for the twenty that I got. And these things are LED crystal clear, five millimeter. I thought the ones that I got were three. No, oh, regardless. Um, anyway, uh, 2.2 volts, uh, 620 to 625 nanometers is the wavelength of the light, 30 degree view angle. And where are we here? Yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter if they're three or five millimeter, they're still two to 2.2 volt, like most red LEDs these days. And the different colors have different forward voltages, which is all totally common and normal for LEDs. All right, here is everything from this mailbag. Um, as usual, a very wide range of stuff, just because I tend to order kind of randomly. So, uh, how long did these things take to get here? The crimpers took 21 days because they shipped from a Canadian warehouse belonging to one of these Chinese companies. But that's interesting. At least I find it interesting. These LED drivers took six weeks to get here. The solder and the enameled wire took two months, eight weeks. Um, these touch sensors took nine weeks to get here. And these LED, these piranha LEDs, oh, maybe that's why they're called piranhas. Get off. Uh, the piranha LEDs and the relays took four and one half months to get here. Speed winner, slow poke of the month. So as I think I mentioned off the top, this is my 50th mailbag. And I wouldn't keep doing these things if it wasn't for the encouragement from you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, as usual, an extra special thanks to the, uh, to the people over on Patreon for kicking a buck or so into the tip jar every month. Helps me not go broke doing this. I'm having fun doing it, so I'm going to keep on doing these so about every second week throughout the year, maybe some extras on long weekends and stuff. I have a playlist of all my mailbags. If you go to my main page, or if you just stick around to the end of the video in a, in a minute or so, there will be a link to the playlist of all my mailbags. The other thing, uh, over on Reddit, I've got... Um, I've got a subreddit that I'll link down in the uh, description of mailbag videos in general, not just mine, but any of the channels that I watch that do mailbags, I've got them all, well, as many as I can anyway, linked from there. Now, if any of you guys do mailbag videos on your own channels, feel free to, to drop a link in there on Reddit, um, uh, take some load off me. And even if you know of other mailbag videos, they don't have to be electronics. Um, absolutely drop them in there. The more the merrier, right? There's not a lot of followers right now, but uh, you never know. Any little bit of publicity helps, right? Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. Mm, be
year.